You're a young boy, around 12 years old. The room is dark, it's beyond your bedtime, yet you are still awake. A laptop sits in front of you, idle and bright. You stare with intent at the words on the screen. Words of a faceless being with limbs that escape the normal understanding of human physiology, flame your imagination and hold your attention. You find yourself jumping from post to post to post, entranced by the messages and stories of this so-called Slender Man. Pictures of the figure start to filter through, and with bated breath and curiosity, you analyze each image with not an inch of the scrutiny and logical deduction that an older and more disillusioned person may have. Where one may have scoffed and laughed away at the images, you sit pondering about the veracity. Why couldn't it be real? Why were you almost hoping they were real? A creaking noise snaps at your attention and your eyes dart from the computer to the bedroom door. A tiny pitter-patter of something beyond seeps under the frame, but then evaporates into silence. You stare waiting for the sound to return, not realizing you've been holding your breath the entire time, but the sound never does. After a while, you feel safe enough to return your attention to the forums where, for all intents and purposes, the Slender Man actually does exist. You open Notepad and begin a script, and within an hour, your imagination, your excitement, and your fascination has led to a video. Your name is Jackson Clark, and you get published <laughs> on your first ever YouTube upload. Myth Information Slender Man, fuck yeah. That was my first video, baby. Welcome to the Red Thread. My name is Jackson Clark, and I am returning over 13 years later to one of the most wildly prolific internet creepy pasta esque things, I guess. I, I don't, I still don't know how to like clarify or define. Uh, he's, Slender Man. He's, a, he's just a creepy pasta. It's yeah. great to have like the lead investigator back, though. I'm sure the Slender Man community has been eagerly awaiting your return, Jackson. Yeah, they, they've been waiting with bed and breath. Uh, this time, though, it's not just me. Uh, in in the original myth uh, myth video, the seven minute long myth video, uh, it was just me. But this time, I'm bringing along two of my closest friends, in that of Charlie and Isaiah, to help me on this adventure. Because uh, realistically, I, I think I'm too biased when it comes to Slender Man. I'm too entranced by Slender Man. Enchanted You're too close. Even. Yeah, I'm too close to the source. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been put under his spell. So I need you guys along with me to just make sure that I'm thinking about this logically and can give everyone at home the correct information that they so need. Um, so how are you guys? Doing great, Jackson. I always like to ask. I always like to get a bit of a mood check in before we get into this into this stuff. And it's always nice to hear you are uh, doing fine, Charlie. I think you've said that every single time. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't change it up at all. <laughs> Give me something new. Just all, just always doing fine here, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Isaiah? You got anything cool to I, add? Uh, I'm also doing fine, but in an even more fine way than Charlie is. So Nice. Good to hear. Amen, right. brother. <laughs> you guys know about Slender Man. Everyone knows about Absolutely. Slender Man. But yeah. how deep did you get involved with Slender Man? <laughs> how deep of a relationship was it? Uh, I, I, I'll say this once for the internet. As a child, I'm pretty sure I wrote Slender Man creepy pastas. Really? <laughs> like when I was like 11 or 12, I think I wrote like a couple stories about like you're alone. Pretty much what the intros are. You're alone in the woods. <laughs> There's a man. He's tall. He doesn't have a face. You're dead. <laughs> like was it was it directly Slender Man? Yeah, it was directly uh, Slender Man. Because okay. I was it I wasn't... remember I was really into Slender Man. Yeah, yeah. I also was pretty into it, but the thing is, it's a little sadder for me because when Slender Man came out, I think I was a junior in high school, so I was already mm. too old for that. But uh, you still got I into see. it? Yeah, I, I still got into it. That was like the first big creepy pasta I really cared about. Mm -hmm. It's probably the first one that I saw happen in kind of like real time. You know, like it was something that I was around. Would for. it be out of line to say Slenderman kind of kicked off creepypastas as like a cultural thing? Because was he mm. the first one that kind of built a community around it? Yeah, yeah, I would say that it led to like the proliferation of it or of the genre itself. But like creepypastas and stuff like that obviously existed before that. Scary stories always existed. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, yeah, true, but it also creepy past. It's like SCP Foundation, I believe, was like a year before Slender Man. So, that that is, yeah. so I, I just Googled it. Someone did point out Ted the Caver came out in 2001, which was oh, arguably yeah, the wow. first creepy pasta. So, okay. Yeah. I remember the one that I found creepy pastas through was Ben Drowned, and that was before Slender Man, I'm okay. pretty sure. Right. Wait, was Ben Drowned the Majora's Mask one? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that was the yeah. yeah, that was one. a really good one. I remember that one. That was a really. Yeah. F- that was. A I always good loved. One. This is a, a bit of a pivot from Slender Man, but those were always my favorite kind of creepy pastas or creepy things on the internet. Was like uh, uh, the kind of corrupted media trend where like a game is haunted or a, or a lost TV show is haunted, and there's like re- like recounts or stories about th- those media. I always found those like the funnest. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think though, Isaiah, that like Slender Man was the massive popularity boost for the genre. That That's when everyone- I remember it going everywhere, like creepypasta yeah, yeah. culture being a thing with people making their own stories and sharing them and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's pretty undeniable, uh, with like, there's a movie made about Slender Man, stuff like that. It, it yeah, even, yeah. it extended beyond just the year it, it was made popular, you know, it's mm-hmm. been like a decade and- Slender Man was still somewhat talked about, which is impressive for something like this. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the synopsis of Slender Man. Does someone want to talk about Slender Man himself? Or I'll for any him. for anyone who doesn't know about Slender Man, I guess we actually have an audience that skews a little bit older. So maybe there are a few people that don't know Slender Man because they're too old to use the internet at the time and now they're just getting into it. I still think they'd know the name Slender Man because even outside of just creepy pastas, it proliferated into like horror culture itself. And like uh, there was the Slender Man killings, which also put the name out there in a big yeah. way. So it's definitely a name I think anyone's heard of before. More so than any other creepy pasta, anyway. For sure. So Slender Man is a fictional character starring in the pseudo internet creepy pasta who captured the fascination and interest of internet users during the late 2000s and early 2010s. Slender Man has a common appearance in almost all the media he's found in. He's described as having male features, a milky, white, featureless face, freakishly tall, and unnaturally thin. He's usually seen sporting an all-black suit and black pants. At will, he is able to elongate all his limbs and body to strike fear into those he's haunting. He's also able to conjure multiple black tendrils from his body. It is unknown whether or not he kills or just captures his victims, but it is said that no matter what happens to you, No evidence will be left behind and nobody will ever see you again. The story, paired with the images posted to accompany the story, obviously captured the imagination of those who enjoyed similar creepy internet stories. Did you guys find the image of him creepy at all? Mm, Not particularly. I just thought it was interesting. Like, I thought it was well done. But I was also old at the time. Older at the time. I think when I was a kid, I thought the idea of like being outside. What honestly scared me more than the creepy pasta was like the Marble Hornet series, yeah, and I particularly how Hornet. like they would be looking out at the woods at night, and then just you'd realize the the blank face was there in the tree line watching you. I did find some of yeah. that stuff creepy. I remember that's always the best horror when like the it's it's not so much in your face it's the kind of like thing where you have to go back and look at each frame and then you yeah. notice things yeah that's always creepy i always love stuff like that i wish they did that more in horror movies instead of just jump scares um but yeah i guess i guess looking through the eyes of like 12 year old jackson i found it creepy at the time i don't i don't necessarily know why there's nothing about it right now that's jumping out as like creepy but maybe it's just because there's been so much of this kind of stuff since then that it's kind of lost all impact like featureless face and stuff like that kind of boring now wearing a suit very classy classy uh creepy dude very tall lanky i don't know it's it doesn't looking back it doesn't seem like anything special just from the appearance of him but i think it's more so the story around the slender man and the uh, mythos that the creator kind of conjured up. So, the Slender Man started on this something awful internet forums, which was, I, I never used it. Did you guys use it? I went on there occasionally, yeah. They, that was a, a hotspot for some of the biggest, most influential memes of the day. Like what? Something awful is where like, a ton of shit started. Like, yeah, that's, uh, that's where like meme culture kicked off. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. 
I don't, I don't I want to get it wrong, though. but I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Yeah, they started they started that entire trend of like the uh that Reddit format they ran into the ground with like the bad luck Brian type shit where they just take oh, those photos. Good. They did like all of that. It seems that started on something awful. But they also made some of like the like big videos like um Uwe Boll fought someone from something awful. He used to insult his movies. Mm-hmm. No, like yeah. they, that was a huge, huge site. So was it the most popular social media site at the time in terms of like internet forums? I would say so, probably. So it was like a precursor to Reddit almost. What was the other Reddit before Reddit? It was like Dig. Dig. Yeah. So it was like Dig and something awful. And that was the uh, like late. 2000s yeah it was, well no it was mid 2000s because like <laughs> yeah, the ua ball fight with the something awful guy was 2006 yeah mm. i never used i never used something awful i i never even came across it i don't know it mustn't have been a thing that was common over here in australia uh the internet forum that i used the most during that time period was the bungee.net forums because i was a halo <laughs> there was a sub forum on there called the flood and i would hang out there all the fucking time and just shit posts and stuff like that and i think that's probably where i came across slender man honestly so shout out to the bungee net forum before there was any you know like title or prestige attached to it jackson was doing it for the love of the game on the bungee.net forums <laughs> I, you joke oh my god this is unlocking it like an old memory i had i actually had like a pinned thread there like the moderators pinned the thread uh and i would just like review internet myths there was like a collection of internet, <laughs> internet myths that i would i think that's what started the youtube series actually or the oh youtube series word. as in two videos holy shit that's a that's a deep cut memory anyway Shout out to the Bungie.net forums, infinitely better than the something awful. <laughs> I, I'll forums. say, I think I'm pretty sure I'm the youngest out of everyone on this podcast. I was like, I I never went on like something awful forums, but I watched YouTube a lot, and they would talk about stuff from like something awful. Mm. So that's the only experience I had with it. Yeah, I've definitely heard about it now, but not. I'd never visited it back then, so I yeah. don't really know what the vibe was then. It does seem from the comments that I had read in for research of this video um it does seem like the vibe was mostly like reddit tier stuff yeah. which was like you you hear something like a, a forum called something awful i was thinking like 4chan going in but no it's it's like the most reddit tier stuff yeah, possible yeah. in there pretty much from what i could see anyway so on the something uh, awful internet forums a thread was created titled photoshop uh, contest and users were tasked with creating paranormal images so it was like just a photoshop competition who could create the scariest images basically many users would submit photos but none would be talked about as much as those created by a man by the name of eric nudson on june 10th 2009 eric posting under the pseudonym victor surge cool name <laughs> is that a pokemon reference Victor Probably Surge. not. I don't think Surge is just the cool sounding word. <laughs> I swear, one of the gym leaders in like Pokemon Lieutenant Surge, yeah, yeah, Lieutenant Surge is his first name. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Victor Surge would post two images along with descriptions for each of them in this Photoshop contest thread. So the first image we have here is like a <laughs> bunch of children walking towards the camera with a well Slender Man in the back, just kind of sitting there standing there um yeah just sta standing there and the quote that he posted along with this was quote we didn't want to go we didn't want to kill them but it's persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time 1983 photographer unknown presumed dead so that's the first that's the very first image uh, I don't know where where he would have got this photo from. Do you think he hired a bunch of children for this Photoshop competition? <laughs> no, this was probably something that was like in a yearbook or something. Yeah. He just takes the image, puts Slender Man in the background, which for one is all that it needs to be for an internet legend to kick off, at least, you know, back yeah. then on the internet. Like, it's good. It's effective. The little caption gives an idea of some haunting mm. presence that maybe killed the photographer. It puts enough pieces in place for people's imagination to run imagination what the creature to run could well. be. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was surprised going back and learning about this all again that it kind of spread even after having been created in a thread called Photoshop Contest. Like, that immediately... That immediately removes all the mystery, like for kids 
wanting to believe that Slender Man is real. Yeah. Like it was it was a very obvious. Well, you don't think about it that contest. hard. You're just like, oh, scary. And that's enough. Well, also, you don't see that it was part of a Photoshop contest when you start posting it elsewhere. Yeah, yeah which is what happened to me. But then if I did, <laughs> had have done any kind of like finding the origins of it, I would have seen that it was created in a Photoshop contest and that would have removed everything. Like to, all of your stories, uh, Isaiah, that you were talking about, like the, uh, what was it, Ted the Ted the Cave Diver or whatever the fuck it was called? Ted the Caver, yeah. Yeah, Caver. Like there's, at, it wasn't created in like a a subreddit about like creepy writing, like two sentences. No, or Ted something. the Caver was an Angel Fire story that like he made his own blog about to get that across. So no, it wasn't like the same kind of format. Yeah, there was like some air of I guess believability if you yeah, wanted yeah. to believe it. Whereas if it was made in like a creative writing class <laughs> and then advertised as such, it would have lost all of its kind of impact. I think. Uh, so yeah, I was just surprised that it kind of had this impact even after having been created in the Photoshop contest thread. And then the very next image he posted in the same thread is another image of children in a park playing around, having a good time. And in the back, Slender Man's hanging out again with like squid tentacles hanging off his arms. Never really understood the whole tentacle element of Slender Man, <laughs> but he has them. He's like a gene spliced octopus. With a tall dude. Does he have hair there? No, I don't. No. Wait. You're, you're, which photo are you looking at? The one in the mirror or the one at the park? At the park. No, the he doesn't have it. I mean, it's too vague to tell. I think it's still supposed to be just a blank face, a tall figure with kids. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, the quote for that one is, One of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformity cited as film defects by officials. Fire at Library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. 1986, photographer Mary Thomas, missing since June 13th, 1986. So Slender Man's even gone for the photographers. He's leaving no one behind. Which is great. Yeah, I mean, he can't, he can't be seen. But he, he was seen. <laughs> the photos. Well, still found but he tried way. not to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. So already, um, Slender Man's kind of not Slender Man. Victor Surge is kind of creating this mythos around these images, and that's what kind of separated it from all the other shit that was posted in the Photoshop contest. Yeah, I went through that original thread, and some of the other images were cool. Uh, but they didn't have the story to go along with it, which is what I think propelled Slender Man beyond all of those other things. Users would start to give positive feedback to the photos, with one user stating, this is going to give me nightmares. <laughs> what a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. This is what I mean by Reddit tier comments. It's like, <laughs> it was, you read a fucking thread about photo, like Photoshop it being a Photoshop contest. I don't understand how you could say this is going to give me nightmares. I can't give you up dudes for this one. It's two spooks. <laughs> the kids are like, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> a, few, a few hours later, Eric would make another comment, playing into the story and acting like Slender Man is a real entity. Maybe I'll do some more research. I've heard there may be a couple more legit Slender Man photographs out there. I'll post them if I find them. Victor Surge. Yeah, so Victor's doing all the hard work. He's going out there, going to the libraries, his local libraries, collecting photos. I, I don't know. It's just a, it's a cute story that he's constructing, I guess, at this point. Like, people want to believe it. I knew about the previous two pictures. I actually haven't seen this one before. Neither so have I. It, it's the picture of, like, someone taking a flash in front of a mirror with Slender Man standing over their shoulder. And it says, The next photo was posted by Victor Surge onto the Something Awful forums was a picture of an ornate mirror in a dimly lit mansion. Three women are seen taking a flash photo of the mirror, and the image captures a peculiar-looking man looming behind them. The picture was accompanied by writing that would go on to paint a story about the picture's origins. On 5-24-1995, it says, 1994, Wilkes Estate. One subject reported nothing out of the ordinary before taking photograph. Lower stairs area was said to be very dark. Subject states that after the camera flash, she heard a sound like a watermelon being unable to understand subject. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. Well, she I don't know heard what that means. a sound like a watermelon. 
Yeah, well, it's the Slender Man carry. He's, what was the guy that like smashes watermelons? Gallagher, right? Yeah. He just fucking okay. carries around a sledgehammer and smashes watermelons. <laughs> I don't watermelons. know what that means. Maybe it means someone's head got bashed or something. I don't know. Maybe it was uh, that he just like has squat. Oh, because maybe tentacles. Because he's got tentacles, but uh, they make maybe. squelching noises. That's oh. gross. <laughs> Interesting gross. theory. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 525 of 93. Subject unable to recall events after manner power failure. Unable to question other two identified subjects. Camera and film acquired from Gloria Creedy, current resident of Woodview Mental Hospital and Psychological Rehabilitation Clinic. Film mostly uncontaminated despite massive blood and human tissue present on camera. No positive ID on anomalous, tall, and slender subject. Facial blur (laughs) caused by possible contamination. You mean we didn't we didn't find a match in the database of <laughs> convicted criminals <laughs> for the Slender Man? We couldn't find any fingerprints, unfortunately. <laughs> Those damn tentacles. <laughs> so that's interesting. The people who took the picture wound up in a mental hospital. Then after that, on six seven of ninety three, it says early digital analysis indicates tall subject may have no eyes. Anomalies previously thought to be film errors and flash artifacts now thought to be appendages. Wait, so they had that photo for like a month and then it took them a month to figure out that he may have no eyes just by eyeballing it and looking at the photo in that one month period of time. That's all they they're very with. good at what they do, to be Apparently fair. They never claim to be. And then three days later, it says final identified subject reported missing along with over th- with other 33 patients and staff of Woodview Mental Hospital and Psychological Rehabil- Rehabilitation Clinic South Wink. So basically, Jeez. Slender's kidnapping the people that saw him and all those associated. Oh, okay. So you, the government's doing this? Apparently? No, I think it's the idea that no, Slender's it's, it's Slender doing Man. it. Yeah. Oh, so it's- <laughs> Why would the government be taking away <laughs> Slender Man exciting people? <laughs> they know too much. I don't know. They're working for the Slender Man. Regardless, that's a high kill count for Slender Man. 33 people in one in one sitting. That is a lot. Crazy. Going on, yep. it says, unlike other posters contributing to the overall Photoshop competition, Victor Surge wasn't just posting edited photos, he was attempting to tell a story. Others are describing what they did to their photos, but when Eric is talking about the photos, he acts as if they are real. He dug these out of archives. He's looking through evidence. He's looking through reports. This made his post stand out and made people want more, and more would come. On the same day of June the 11th, 2009, he posted two more photos with no descriptions, but one would be different. So we see here the one of Slender Man just outside of a window. I've seen this image before. Yeah, that one's a very popular one. Yeah. It's so dumb. It, I mean, <laughs> so it is I mean, outrageously stupid. <laughs> it, it is outrageously stupid. He'd be that close. But I get how this works into the mythos that there's like paranoia. <laughs> st- okay. Look, I'm trying to be a, def- a defender of Slender Man. Okay? Oh, I love, I love Slender Man. Slender Man is always going to have a special place. You've in my got heart, the guy standing I, in the window with a rifle. Thinks yeah, he sees that's what I was just outside. laughing at. He's got a hunting rifle. <laughs> 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 What's Slender Man going to do against that? And then after that, we have a what seems to be a police department report, but where the stuff's supposed to be filled out, it's mostly scribbled. Uh, we see the scribbling Slender Man, kill us already, kill us, kill us, kill us. Um, mm. Wilkes Place, which is that house, right, that the picture was yeah, taken. Yeah, the mansion. Yeah. yeah. And then there is a note from 61193, which is the day after the people went missing from the asylum, where it says fog rolled in 3 p.m. It appeared at 327. Mark and Evan went outside, couldn't cover them, fog too thick, screams and sounds like a baby laughing, but deeper. <laughs> that's a throwback. That's like a throwback to the Goatman episode where I said, yeah. what was it, like a goat bleeding behind you on the bridge? Was yeah. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would be more afraid of a baby crying in the woods than I would a goat. Well, that'd be more concerning than a goat for sure, because a baby shouldn't be there. But it's You're also right. still not a concerning sound if the baby's laughing. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's cool, I guess. Someone's having fun out here. Yeah, it's it's a party. <laughs> I do want to hear what a baby would sound like deep though, like a deep voice. They just sound like one of us laughing. <laughs> 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 that's how babies laugh, yeah. They hear voice critical laughing in the woods behind them. <laughs> Yeah, that would be terrifying. It's <laughs> it's out in the fog. We may be a little outside of town, 
but someone will come. And then two days later, rest of us can't sleep, no food, no power. And then one day later, what does it want? Tom showed me that weird sub- case file. Weird case file. There you go. Yeah, yeah. it's it's written legibly down below. I yeah, like yeah. transcribed it. Well, not so much the next one. Oh, I next did. Oh, I didn't sense. see that you were. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to read all of that yeah, off the note. To- <laughs> I didn't see you had it typed out. Oh, that would have been better. Okay, <laughs> you did well. I Thank didn't you. realize you weren't reading from it until just then. And then one day later, uh, it says Wilkes Place, and then it's scribbled out uh, after yeah, that. So again, all... the house that all this is supposedly happening at. Well, it says like Wilkes Place, and then same, 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 same. I, so I think he's saying like the thing from the Wilkes Place the same is the creature. same thing as this. Yeah. 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 He's doing it like a Redditor mm. would do. Um, Slender Man, kill us already. Kill us. Kill, kill, kill. Okay. So they're getting edgy with it. Yeah, so after that, after the note, it says, The scribblings on the document seem to be from the perspective of police officers serving and protecting the community in this made-up world Victor Surge was creating. The note even mentions Wilkes Place, calling back to the previous post Eric made and showing an overarching connection, uh, connecting story and environment. The photo of the man looking out the window and seeing Slenderman could be taken from within the department. That's a good point. You could see some obvious inspiration in Eric's story, with one being Stephen King's The Mist, which Eric would go on to confirm in an interview later on. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Those were both like really important stories to me as a kid, so it's cool that they inspired yeah. each other. These images were highly effective with the something well, I don't think, I don't, Wait, I don't think Stephen King's The Mist was inspired by Slenderman. No, it was, it was a no, mutually okay. symbiotic relationship. Okay, correct. One was inspired <laughs> off the other. Thank you. Not that Stephen King read Slenderman. It was like, there's some good ideas in here. Yeah. I like what they're doing with The Mist. <laughs> These images were highly effective with the user Zombie Scholar commenting, you're an amazing and terrible bastard, sir. What that is the most well played. That is the most Reddit phrase. That you are an amazing and terrible bastard, sir. Well played. Just take your up dudes and go, my good sir. <laughs> now to look over my shoulder every couple seconds for the rest of my day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are these images of this guy with a hunting rifle looking at a like cartoonish figure outside making you like paranoid for the rest look, of your day? You're in a, a fucking thread called of. contest. Photoshop contest, goddammit. They didn't, they didn't yeah. have a lot to work with, okay? <laughs> like, you had to take what scares you could. Yeah. Um, the next day on June the 12th, 2009, Eric w- would post six more images. And these are all, again, more world-building stuff. Um, we have children's drawings of them next to Slenderman. One shows, I think, his tentacles covered in blood, attacking Jake, age seven, or at least Jake's <laughs> the one making the picture. Um <laughs> I think Jake's the one that drew it. Or maybe Slenderman drew it. I, I'm not sure. Oh, no. Jake's I think Jake drew right. it, but maybe yeah, yeah, he yeah. watched another kid get killed by the tentacles. Oh, true. Yeah. And then there's a birthday party invitation for Jake that says it's Saturday, May 8th, 18th, which 18th. is before the events of all this stuff going down in June. Um, I believe, by the way, that's a Triceratops silhouette. So if mm-hmm. that has anything to do with the story, if thank that's you, a connection. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for inserting your dinosaur special interest. <laughs> He's an ancient entity dating all the way back to the paleo- Paleolithic era. <laughs> that, that Triceratops was the Slenderman's first victim. Yeah, not many people know that Slenderman is a Triceratops, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a picture of like an adult with some kids. Looks like maybe a birthday party or like park setting. I don't know. Um did you notice Slenderman in the background of that picture, though? I didn't actually. I, <laughs> the I had trees. just glazed by that one. Yeah, never. Yeah, yeah. You can see him in the trees back there. You can see his suit. Yeah, he looks way yeah. too close here. He looks way like anyone would be like, "Hey, you, what are you yeah, doing? Who's that tall yeah. suited guy Get standing out. behind the trees?" There's yeah. a little drawing from Rebecca where she portrays the same thing, and then there's a newspaper report um, that says a local boy. An eight-year-old boy named Jake Greenwood, which I imagine is the same Jake from the pictures, has disappeared. Um, so those are the six extra pictures that were dumped yep. the next day. Yeah. So the story I took from this, and I'm not sure, I, I, it's up for interpretation. That, that, that's the great thing about art. Any You can gleam any kind of interpretation from it. But my interpretation was that uh, Slender Man kind of created a relationship with Jake. And Jake was drawing pictures of him. And then 
uh, the, Jake had a birthday party and Slender Man abducted him shortly after his birthday party or even at his birthday party since he's there at the birthday party and then started haunting a girl named Rebecca who would then draw Slender Man as well. So it's like I think you immediately read way too deep into it. So right, I think it? it's pretty clear. Slender Man found Jake, abducted Jake, and Jake just drew pictures about that. And that birthday party invitation was like the evidence left behind. And then Rebecca just happened to see Slender Man while she was out <laughs> on a walk with her mom. <laughs> Wait, so Jake got abducted and then start, like Slender Man gave him pieces of paper to draw on? Yeah, so that's one of the things about Slender Man that got established is he doesn't necessarily kill them. He just kidnaps them and they're like their own little family unit. Yeah, but they don't come back. Oh, right. Yeah, they don't so come they back. Just... But, but the, well, then how do we get have... the photos? He must have left them in the forest or something and someone stumbled <laughs> you upon them. You have to find them. the pages. They're on the trees. Come on, Jackson. Exactly. This is basic yeah, like lore game. world building. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. No, I still think You're... I'm right. Yours is stupid. Why would he form a relationship with Jake at his birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's behind the trees. He was clearly there at the birthday party. To to abduct kids, not to Yeah, like, to abduct them. Yeah. Not, it's not like he's invited and he was like the friend. I never said he was invited. I just said he formed a relationship. No, I said that he formed a relationship with him somewhere before the birthday party. But then the birthday party is when he abducted him. Is what I assume. I just don't know why they have to know each other. He just kidnaps kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, he clearly... Well, okay. He clearly knows... They know each other because he, uh, Jake's been drawing pictures of him, right? Post-abduction. Oh, yeah, but you're saying that's post-abduction. All right. All right. I guess both are possible. He's, all right, so let me read the let me read the newspaper clipping. His mother reported seeing him playing near the trees of his backyard prior to his disappearance, and noticed nothing suspicious. So would that be the same trees uh, that he's standing behind in the party picture? Yeah, there's also only two of them, so it's not like he'd be playing behind the trees, and not being seen. <laughs> like you can see everything from those tiny trees. It's also in like the middle of a row of houses as, as well. Like yeah. He's completely exposed in someone's front yard, yeah. Yeah, I mean, anyone walking by could see Slender Man hanging behind those trees. Anyway, so that came along with a, a like a, a description from Victor Surge saying, alert, alert, deployment request, <laughs> anti-S walker unit to deploy to Wichita, Kansas, which is where the abduction happened. So they have an anti-Slender Man walker unit, I suppose, uh, in the government. I see. So yeah. it's, like, it's like an yeah, SCP naturally. thing. He's trying, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this was where SCP started kind of becoming a theme in this. There was a government body set up to handle Slender Man. So uh, do you want to continue, Isaiah? But this is kind of just what you said here. Yeah, so oh, the basic yeah. description of the photos, we talked about that. Uh, after these photos were posted, almost everyone in the thread was talking about Slenderman and praising Eric's images. The focus of the thread went from being a Photoshop contest to ostensibly one about the Slenderman itself. One user would say, This entire series of images is fabulous, but this one is a killer. Purely because all the little kids I work with never colored the sky all the way to the ground, <laughs> Just like this. It's very plausible detail and adds the extra touch of authenticity. <laughs> so that's referring to the picture yeah, yeah. that Rebecca mm -hmm. drew. He, so Victor Surge is quite good at replicating the art style of a child, apparently. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Later in the day, on June the 12th of 2009, Eric would post two more photos. This one I've seen a ton. The one of him yeah. like on stilts, like tentacle stilts in the woods. Yeah. Oh, so that's what he does with his tentacles. He uses them to walk around while he like hovers in the air. Yeah, it's like the anchor arms from SpongeBob, but with like four <laughs> tendrils. Living like Larry. <laughs> St the, the caption for it said Steinman Woods and said both subjects were hunting in the Steinman Woods four hours before sundown surviving subject states that while hunting both men grew uneasy as fog levels rapidly increased a constant murmuring ar sound accompanied by a low hum eventually became apparent to the two men an hour after the fog increased an object falling out of the tree struck one of the men in the left shoulder causing him to discharge his weapon Object said to be the body of a man of unknown age. It was very precisely dissected with major... Wait, hold on. An object fell out of a tree, and then it turns out the object was a body. Okay, I see. 
A piece of a body. A piece of a body, okay. It was very precisely dissected, with major internal organs still contained within the ribcage in what looked to be clear bags. Surviving subjects placed organ bag within backpack. Attack followed several minutes later after a low children's laugh like a giggle. Surviving subject ran until he reached his vehicle. Subject then drove to assume safety. Okay, so the whole the whole children's the whole children's like laughter and stuff. So that like adds credence to the theory that he's kidnapping kids and keeping them alive and they're just like haunting uh with him. They're like part of his posse, right? That's the theory. It's not a theory, that's just his lore, yeah. That yeah, that yeah, yeah. he brings kids with him, maybe. Right? Yeah. Or possesses right. them in some way. But what's yeah. with the dissection? Is that implying that like Slender dissects people and puts their organs in bags? Yeah, well, there is uh, in the very next uh, okay, all right. description, they talk about it. Yeah. Okay, so after that, um, <clears throat> it says that the backpack was destroyed, talking about the organs, and that the surviving subject is classified as a B7 witness. B7 witness to be placed in a quarantine blind box until resolution, whatever that so means. So the government is kidnapping people. I mean, it's people who have like witnessed Slender, but the government didn't kidnap the wing of 33 people. Unless they witness Slenderman. Why would they okay, not? May- maybe, they but would- I don't think that's what the implication is. Okay. The implication is that Slenderman kidnapped them. But yeah, they weren't even yeah. children. He's only kidnapping children, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he's, he, kidnapped- he went after someone who saw him previously at the uh, house. Yeah. And okay. then into the other picture in the woods, again, of him like stood up looking very spider like in the trees. Since 2007. Investigation team discovered 22 bodies of both genders and various ages impaled on broken tree b- branches in a radiating circle pattern with chest mutilation as often noted with Slenderman. Upon confirmation, lead investigator redacted called for an immediate evacuation of investigative investigation team at 1700 hours. Bodies first discovered at 1100 hours. Deadline for safe evacuation of team with only viewed physical evidence of Slenderman approximately 1730. Lost contact of team at 1725. Safety procedures fell well within established protocols. Reason for abnormality is unknown. Second team recovered camera equipment one week later. Slenderman's safety procedure required this incident's physical photographic evidence to be disposed of by no later than 1020. Is is this your writing the next part? No, I honestly no, 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 what, no, no, what is no, this? No. Okay. This, this is him. So so okay, remember Victor Surge is a character uh that is like researching Finding all this. this stuff. Yeah. Oh, so right. He, so he, then he comments on what he just found. So Victor Surge says, I honestly don't get what half this poo poo means. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> Why I'm did you immediately sl- assume that I wrote that? <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I was I like, this. I was like, this doesn't seem like a field report. <laughs> the next line. <laughs> yeah, there's no um, investigator who's gonna be like, man, this poo poo and then smokes a cigar. There's no Jackson that would say that either. I'm there's just, plenty of times I can hear you saying like, oh man, this is all poo poo, and I don't get it. <laughs> I've never once said poo poo. I've never once acted like it's that. It's more Come likely on. you would say it than an investigator would say it. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Well. It's more. It's more likely that Victor Surge said it because that's what actually happened. So okay, yeah, we can continue. I, I honestly don't get what half this poo poo means. I'm done with this Slenderman stuff. It's starting to make me uneasy. It's like reading the GBS ghost story threads before I go to bed. Why do I have to look at all this stuff while it's super late? It's frowny face. <laughs> Yeah, that's the actual frowny face used in that in that message as well. <laughs> Luckily, my friend is coming over. Aww, I hope Aww. it's a good friend. It's gonna have a nice yeah. ending. I'm sure. I'm story. sure. I'm sure it will. Um, yeah. because right after that, it's written in Eric's world, Slenderman is a known entity. There are procedures for when people encounter Slenderman. This adds more detail and color to his story and makes it seem like Slenderman is an active threat that the public has to constantly be on the lookout for. The last part seems to come from Eric's point of view, with him commenting on his investigation. Finally, on June the 13th, 2009, Eric would post his last photo and description. I've never seen this one before. I've seen this one. This one looks like it. This one looks like an early AI generated photo. It actually does. It does. It's pretty cool. Huh. It's neat. Yeah. It's, uh, the caption for it says, for, for the for the audio listeners, it's like in a house, someone's running up a staircase, and then it's like a blurry Slender Man, but you can see like the impressions of a face, and he's reaching his hands out towards the camera. And it says, my yeah. friend is Her- Herogis? What? Her- Herogis. 
Oh, my friend is here. Just came in. Barely made upstairs. Got picture. Locked door. But it's right there in the hall. Don't look at its pictures. It doesn't want to be known about. Don't look. Well, then why'd you post them, you dick? <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Keep it a secret. No one yeah, look at the these fuck? pictures that I'm posting right here. <laughs> yeah, Close your eyes when viewing these photos. Is going to be a dying message? You, you prick. <laughs> Means. As user WW Jabusto <laughs> would go on to comment, oh Jibus, <laughs> this <laughs> one is giving me the willies. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jibus. <laughs> oh, I love something awful, folks. Oh man. I'm so glad we, we found Reddit to corral all these people in. I thought Reddit was like a new thing. I thought the internet back in like 2009 or whenever this was, I think it was 2009, would, was so much cooler. But looking back, it's always been this Reddit tier. It, it is shit. always 100%. Yeah, that's just like one of those rose tinted glasses things. Like people think the internet was different, like the attitude was different. But if you go back and read a bunch of old threads, it's the same goddamn Redditor attitude. Yeah. Oh, Jeebus, this one is giving me the willies. Like, who says that? <laughs> who, who <laughs> then it continues that? and says, usually subtle works best, but sometimes the blatant ones scare me more. <laughs> I oh, really good. I really want to read a Slenderman horror novel now with pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants a picture book. <laughs> oh my gosh. With pop-ups. <laughs> Okay, I'll right. go ahead and take the conclusion yeah, here. Yeah. The ending to this story does seem abrupt, but Eric has stated he wanted to end the story the way that it would be the scariest. Responding to another poster, he said, Yeah, I wanted the last set of images to be more obvious, since the people taking the pictures kind of knew what they were dealing with and therefore could get better shots before it wiped them out. And I kind of wanted to bring it to a close. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it, although initially it hadn't been my intent to do more past the first picture post, what essentially inspired me was stuff like The Rake, since that pretty much terrified me. Having an unearthly creature such as a skinwalker or something stalking you has always been much scarier than ghosts, in my opinion. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Do you do you get the do you get the rake influence, uh, Isaiah? I'm actually kind of surprised because if you would have asked before we read this, I would have guessed that Slenderman was before the rake. Uh so it's surprising to see that it's the other way around. That's interesting. No, yeah. After this last post, everyone in the thread would continue to talk about the Slender Man within the context of the now newly born creepypasta that would go on to share with people who weren't familiar with something awful. The spirit of the Slender Man would continue on, with users creating their own photos of the entity and adding their own contributions to the lore. In many ways, Slender Man would be an extension to the build or budding realm of collaborative creepypasta storytelling elements that things like SCP Foundation submitted. It's undeniable, regardless, that Eric posting these photos would change internet creepypasta culture forever and inspire countless stories from others. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's kind of like the beginning of the Slender Man. That's what Victor Serge created for us, uh, the entirety of his creation. His direct that's, creation. That's pretty fascinating. I didn't realize the original had that much lore attached to it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of like, uh, law was included in these photos, but I was also surprised at how quickly it kind of happened. It was all in the span of like a day, a week. Basically. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. No, it was like week. it was like four days, right? It, yeah, it was very, it was very days. quick. Yeah. Um, regardless, Thus it was a legend quick. was born. Yeah. So it just kind of spread out from there. Like people would take those photos and then post them on other internet forums without all of that kind of context or knowledge of where it came from. And be, they'd be like, oh man, look at this, look at this creepy photo. Pretty scary, huh? And then idiots like me who didn't know anything about Photoshop or knew that images could be edited would be like, holy shit, Sunderman is actually real. That's crazy. So that's how it kind of gained its popularity in general. And the proliferation would continue with a YouTube channel called Marble Hornets, which was created on June 19th, 2009. So that's very recent, um, well, very soon after Slender Man was actually created. And how do you want to do you want to explain and describe uh, Marble Hornets, Isaiah? Yeah, Marble Hornets was a classic for me. It got me into like early Internet horror. Shortly after Eric's post on the Something Awful forums, a YouTube channel called Mar Marble Hornets was created on June 19th of 2009. This would be the first series to be created around Slenderman. This would also be a very early example of an alternate reality game, or ARG. The series would become extremely successful, 
The channel has garnered over 660,000 subs on YouTube and over 118 million views on the channel. Even early on, the channel would have success, as by August 28th of 2009, the channel had almost 2,000 subscribers and thousands of views. The series would end up receiving a spin-off series, a comic book series, and a spin-off film called Always Watching, A Marvel Hornet Story. This shows that early on, the concept of Slenderman was intriguing to the public and people wanted to see more. So can you describe Marvel Hornets, since you've probably watched it all? So basically, the idea behind Marvel Hornets is that it was a guy who was like a college student um, who was originally trying to make a documentary, but started to run into this figure. And he's never referred to as Slender Man. He's called the... it's, the it's Watcher? Something, or something the like Watcher. That. It's something like the Architect or the... Oh, yeah, the Architect, I think. It's, yeah. I, it's not the... I forget what he's called. I can look it up real quick. But basically, it's our main character, like, chronicling Slender Man slowly getting closer to him and how proxies of Slender Man are getting closer. And it's him saying he doesn't understand what this creature is. He goes to different places to try to discover it. It's a really interesting horror series. And honestly, it works as both, like, a found footage film when you watch the whole thing together. Yeah. And one of the earliest examples of, like like internet horror or like ARG stuff. Yeah, it was very effective. I remember watching it at the time and being actually genuinely pretty scared watching it, which was fun. Um, I'm trying to remember the name as well. I'm trying to look through it. The, the Operator? That's it, The Operator, yeah. That's what they called yeah. him. Yeah, and then uh, they also did some really cool stuff like uh, ARGs and stuff like that on a cryptic side channel that was called To The Ark. Stuff like that. It was a it yeah, was a very fun yeah. series, and it it was very popular, and it continued on for a while. It had a, over 130 episodes. Obviously, with something that long, it kind of you know lost its impact towards the end or whatever, and kind of dragged on a little bit. Yeah. But still, that's to be expected, though. Yeah. Something that spans that length of time with the same subject there. Yeah, yeah, but it was very effective for what it attempted to do. And then even after that, you have in June 26 of 2012, the Slender Man Eight Pages game came out. Yes, which, I mean, as we mm -hmm. all know, that that's like that's how I think I found people like Markiplier and PewDiePie and stuff mm, like that. So. Yep. Yeah. This game was massive. Yeah. This game was talked about even outside of like the internet space. I remember in high school. Yes. This is where people were talking about like the scariest game ever made. Have you ever played Slender? Yep. It's like nothing yep. else. And then it's based on this like entity that like captures children. It's a real story. So like it's spread by word of mouth, like yep. wildfire from this game. Yeah. I remember in high school, we used to all play it together. Like we'd go home, to, or we'd have like a hangout after school and like all play, take turns playing it and getting scared together and shit like that. I consider fun. it probably one of the worst horror games ever made because it spawned that entire genre of, of just going around. to just random asset flipped area and just find like trivial little fucking pieces of a scavenger hunt while getting jump scared occasionally. It's the worst format for horror that even to this day, 12 years later, games are emulating daily. Like that is still the most common horror genre, the most common horror game that gets pumped out in the genre. Yeah, but did you like it at the time? Yeah, of course. It was huge for the time. But looking back on it, I wish it just never got made because that shit <laughs> ruined horror games like forever. Yeah, I, it's... I think it was cool as a one and done kind of concept. Yeah, no, no, it, it definitely was for its time. Yeah, I think I, it, it holds a special place in my heart. Like even my mom was like, let's play Slender Man the Eight Pages. I, I want to play that. That's, that looks fun. So it was like a bonding experience for like the entire family, really. It, it, it was kind of crazy, the impact and reach that it had yeah. uh, from such a simple concept. And you can see it as well. Like go to, I've got a picture here of Google Trends. You can see the uh, the search term relevancy of Slender Man just fucking absolutely skyrocketing when the Slender Man the Eight Page game was what re was yeah. released. Yeah, like it, it was enormous. And it, it was never enormous. left either because it just put it in everyone's mind. So like you have written here as well. Like Slender Man became a super common figure. Like in the early 2010s, there'd be a Halloween costume for Slender Man that was popular. There was references in media across everywhere referencing Slender Man. The, the, I didn't know this, but apparently some people speculate the Enderman character in Minecraft is actually based off Slender Man. Yeah. It's used in memes. Like he was just legitimately infiltrating every facet of internet life and even outside of that. So then in 2018, this is what I want to talk about. They finally released the Slender Man horror film. It was directed by Sylvian White, written by David Burke. 
and it released August 10th, 2018, and was universally hated by everyone. It has a 16% <laughs> score on Rotten Tomatoes, a 3.2 out of 10 on IMDb, and the film would come with controversy when the trailer for the film was released, as some thought it was inappropriate to release the film so soon after the well-known and publicized Slender Man stabbings. So I saw this film in theaters with Kaya, actually. This came out when you guys were still in town. Why did I not go see it? Yeah. Well, oh, maybe I was fucking hung over from the poisoning that Kaya gave me. No, you might have been too scared. Potentially, you came down with a big case of big. Wait, old no, bitch. I no, yeah, but yes, true. But also, I, <laughs> I was probably at Disney World for, during that. God, what, maybe so lame. Have you ever seen the movie Jackson? No, I haven't. You have to. So this film is an absolute disaster. I think it took like four or five years just to make it. Like it, it got caught in production hell. So that by the time it came out, that initial wave of ab- absurd hype was gone. So it came out way too late. It was still rushed. Like nothing in the film worked well at all. It ruined a lot of like the core elements of the Slender Man story as well. It, it couldn't get even the established stuff correct. It wasn't scary. It was trash. Visually horrible. Everything that could go wrong with a horror movie went wrong with the Slender Man film. And I think that's what kind of buried Slender Man as like a scary figure in a lot of people's eyes. It made him more as just kind of like this tired joke that he kind of is today where people yeah, look at Slender Man. Yeah, that was the turning cringe. point for Slender Man, I think. And you're yep. right. Like, it, it, uh, it was announced very uh, a few a few years before it released. You said five years? I'm not sure about that. It, it it was it was quite a few years. It wasn't like a quick turnaround or anything. This got stuck in a, a limbo of production. Yes, 2014. No, wait, no. On January 2018, the first teaser post was revealed. I'm not sure. Regardless, uh, when it was first announced, uh, I remember like a lot of excitement for it. Like, yeah, people were like, "This internet thing is being made into a movie, and it's awesome." And it has a big budget as well, fifty million dollars US. Uh, released by Sony, so it had big, big, uh, you know, you know, big production company behind it. Everything was expected to go well for it, and instead, it fucking bombed. It released, and like, like Charlie said, it was an awful movie from what I've heard. Uh, and it re- and it made a box office. Oh wait, no, sorry, I got that the wrong way around. It didn't bomb. Um, twenty eight million dollars budget. The box office was fifty million. So it probably like broke even at the end of the day when you account for marketing and stuff like that. So that's not as bad as I thought. No, I mean, it's there were still curious enough people to go see it for yeah. sure. But regardless, very bad movie. Yeah. Terrible movie. And what you referenced there at the end is there was controversy because not too long, be- or not too long before that, the Slender Man stabbings happened, which is a real thing that happened on... May 31st, 2014. I thought it was later than that. I didn't know it was in 2014. But in uh, Wisconsin, two young girls named Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire lured another girl by the name of Peyton Lutner into a local park called David's Park during a sleepover. They lured her there under the guise that they would be playing hide and seek. They were 12 years old at the time, and unknown to Peyton, Morgan and Anissa had different plans. Once they're in the woods, the two girls would pin Peyton to the ground, and Geyser would stab Peyton. 19 times with a kitchen knife. The girls would leave her in the woods to die, but miraculously, Peyton wasn't fatally wounded. She would go on to crawl out of the woods onto a bike path where a passerby would find her and call for help. Peyton, luckily, Peyton incredibly survived the attack and would go on to make a full recovery and end up leaving the hospital seven days after the attack. 19 stabs and gets out of the hospital within a week. What a fucking champion. What yeah. a legend. I don't know how you survive 19 stab wounds. Yeah, that's incredible. So yeah. the two girls here, Morgan and Anissa, would be apprehended by the police and when interrogated, they said they did it to please Slenderman. They wanted to become proxies of Slenderman and did the stabbing in the woods because that's where they believed he supposedly lived. They believed that they, if they committed the murder, they would win Slenderman's approval and would live with him in his hidden mansion. Shortly after the attack, Eric Knudsen felt compelled to make a statement I am deeply saddened by the tragedy in Wisconsin, and my heart goes out to the families of those affected by this terrible act. Imagine how shit you must feel having created something that would, like, it's not his fault, obviously, but I'm yeah. sure you feel somewhat guilty at that point, being like, Because oh, it shit. inspired them to believe yeah. in it and do something, 
like absolutely deplorable. I, I I would assume that they didn't even like engage with the original something awful post or anything like that. It would have been Never based entirely off that video game. Yeah, yeah. that's what my gut feeling. Well, is. I mean, it's like they just made it up, right? At least in all the stories I've read, there's never any lore saying normal people who do evil acts become proxies or whatever. Like yeah. it was just, it just seems like they had like a nugget to work off of with Slender Man, and then like mental illness or what have you, you know, did the rest. Yeah. yeah. So wait, Morgan's actions are considered to be oh to be due to her poor mental state and schizophrenia. Anissa was also suffering suffering from delusions as well, seemingly bolstered by Morgan's similar mental state and convincing behavior. Both their delusions of Slender Man would feed off each other, resulting in them believing Slender Man was real through pure self affirmation. Once Anissa was separated from Morgan, her delusions died down, which is usually the case with scenarios like this. And there is usually a primary person who has a more severe, who has more severe delusions, and that was Morgan. So Morgan would end up being sentenced to forty years to life in a mental institution. Jesus. As of January 2024, Morgan has requested to be released, and her hearing is scheduled to be in April 2024. Anissa would be sentenced to 25 years in a mental mental institution, but would end up being released after seven. She was released with multiple. Well, she was released with multiple stipulations, including a GPS monitor, supervision at all times, and a ban on social media usage. Right now, Anissa's whereabouts are unknown, but it is said she's attending college. In an interview with Peyton conducted in a, conducted by ABC in 2019, when she was asked what she would say to her attackers, she said, "I would probably initially thank her. I would say just because of what she did, I have the life I have now. I really, really like it, and I have a plan." I didn't have a plan when I was 12, and now I do because of everything that I went through. I wouldn't think that someone who went through, I wouldn't think that someone who went through that, I did. Oh, I wouldn't think (laughs) someone who went through what I did would ever say that. That's truly how I feel. Without the whole situation, I wouldn't be who I am. I mean, well, that's a very positive outlook on a tragedy. I'm sure that's like coping with it as well, which is fair to say like you would want to spin it into a positive direction for yourself uh it should have obviously never happened this is like a crazy level of delusion from from these two individuals that kind of fed off each other what's crazy to me is the 25 years uh for one of them as opposed to the 40 years because from what i've read they were both very like equally culpable like one stab if one did the stabbing for sure but i believe there was a quote uh like she she asked the other one for permission before stabbing her and the other one said something like to the effect of yeah do it go ballistic so there was like an equal level of dedication and and motivation from both individuals in my eyes. It probably where they were minors, like they had, you know, yeah, psychiatrists yeah. rule and be like, this person is very easily suggestive, yeah. right? Yeah. And the other one seems to be the instigator. So I, I imagine that's what it came down to. But in this case, the instigator, the one that said the things like, yeah, do it, go ballistic was the one that was sentenced to 25 years, which I just found a bit odd. Um, was it? I thought Morgan was the more violent one. She was the more violent one, but there were quotes in that moment where Morgan see, asked asked Anissa Weira something to the effect of, I'll only yeah. do it if you tell me to do it. And then Anissa Weira is like, she says, yes, do it. Go ballistic. Yeah. Like again, it likely just comes down to they were minors. It was more of a psychiatric, you know, judging Decision. rather than a, a criminal yeah. one. Yeah. Twenty. I mean, twenty-five years is a long time. I mean, yeah, it's a long so. time to be stuck in somewhere, even if they only did seven. Like, yeah, yeah. Um. So, but they're well, two of them. Uh. Well, not two of them. Uh. Anissa is out now and apparently in college, and from all accounts, um, what's her name? Peyton is is living a good life, so that's good. Good outcome for for her uh as for morgan she's still in prison or not prison the mental institution may be released later this year we'll have to see how that goes but yeah very very chilling stuff and a very sad outcome overall to the slender man yeah i I remember when all that was happening having to convince my parents like no we're not reading stories that tell us to kill our friends this is just oh yeah (laughs) actually i didn't even consider what that might do for like 
parents and stuff oh yeah well my parents were like freaked out and most parents were they were like oh no like or, or is this what this is this is the horror stories you read like telling you to kill people and stuff and i'm like no i, I don't know where they got this from this is a this is yeah. a one case <laughs> that didn't happen again yeah it's just mental illness i i can't think of a single other creepy pasta that's kind of motivated someone to to murder Momo. what happened there yeah, this wasn't even long ago. You guys don't remember Momo? I remember Momo, parents, yeah. Yeah, parents were no, freaking out because like Momo was telling the kids to hurt themselves. That yeah, kind of shit. Yeah. And I think there was a case of someone actually hurting well, themselves. And- yeah, I mean, like an actual murder, you know, uh, enacted or attempted because of a because of a creepypasta. Oh, well, no, not necessarily, yeah. This is probably super unique in that respect, but it's not unique in the fact that people take creepypasta and think that they're real. Yeah. Or, like, do something about it in the real world. All right. So, in conclusion, in an interview with Eric Knudsen talking about the Slender Man, he said that his goal with the character was to make him simple, which is, I I can see, I can see that. It definitely Mm -hmm. started pretty simple. He describes the Slender Man as an open source creature. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, kind of like that uh, SCP foundation. I believe that is a perfect way to describe him. Anyone can look at him and come up with their own motives for him and his own powers. This results in the huge amount of different stories we have about Slender Man. And when you really break the character down, it's just a man with no face. <laughs> and people are free to give him one. Well, and tentacles. Tentacles it's is true. established. The tentacles never come into the to it, though. He just like walks around on them. No, that's not true. The, he does use his tentacles in some of the iterations. Like when did he did he even have tentacles in Slender Man the eight pages? I don't think so. He did. Well, well, like when you see him, he didn't do anything though. Like that game fucking yeah. super sucks. So what happens is when you see him, it just gets like all staticky and then goes yeah, away yeah, with yeah. a loud noise. So you never. But he does have them there. I'm pretty sure. He just doesn't uh, use them. I don't remember them. But wasn't there another sl- like another Slender Man from the Slender Man the eight page dev? Uh, didn't he release like a sequel to that game like five years later? Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of, because looking at Slender the Eight Pages, the one that came out, it doesn't look like he has tentacles most of the time. Yeah, Slender the Arrival. So he, there was, a, I don't know if it's by the same dev, but they made a Slender the Arrival game, which yeah, was... I think that's what I'm thinking of. Wow, it's got a, whoa, <laughs> it's got 88% positive rating on Steam. Did you ever play it? Slender Arrival? Yeah. yeah. Was it good? I don't remember. Probably not. People liked it for the time. It was a lot more complex than eight pages. Well, yeah, you couldn't get much like yeah. less complex. Than well, the I mean, pages. like you went to different locations, and there was a story, and mm. there was objectives and stuff like that. It was it was a lot higher regarded. Yeah, eighty eight percent on on Steam. All the recent reviews are hundred percent. So it's it's doing well. Um, interesting. I, I I forgot about that like sequel. So. It's kind of the whole story of Slenderman. It's interesting how he went from like a few posts of just, oh, there's this creepy figure and it's kind of like an open and shut story in that. But then it became so much more. It became video games. It became movies. It became ARGs. It even became a news report with a stabbing. Like it's, it's really wild how much this little corner of the internet exploded. But I'm thankful that um, it did because there's probably a direct path that could be traced from me reading about Slenderman when I was like 11 to me here now. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely meant a lot to a lot of people, some good, some bad. Um, but it, like you said, it's absolutely crazy that a small post on an internet forum spread this far, like, and this wide and had this kind of impact just from some photoshopped images. Um, very impressive kind of example of how the internet can be used to spread these kind of tall tales. And have that kind of impact. I love the Slender Man. I think, I think, I think it's one of the most entertaining aspects of the internet when stuff like that happens. So I'm a big fan. Do you guys want to say anything else about Slender Man before we wrap? Not necessarily. I think we covered pretty much everything. The movie sucks. The first game <laughs> sucks, but it was it was fun for the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a product I- of its time, so to speak. Yep. Definitely a product of his time. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it for sure. 
Uh, just like this episode of The Red Thread is a product of right now, this time, and this time's ending because we are ending the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> we really appreciate it. A short one this week, but I, uh, I had a very busy week, so I couldn't dedicate a lot of time to research and The Slender Man just kind of jumped out at me as something that we could easily produce given the time constraints. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about the Slender Man, or at least I hope you had a fun time listening to us recount the Slender Man's tale. Other than that, we'll see you next time on The Red Thread. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you all for watching. Bye.